expectations take and weigh me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my life. I wanna live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. And if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head. And I start to see. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Expectations they keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I wanna live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend, honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, and if I say it enough, it gets ingrained in my head. Tick tock, Mr. Wick.
It's a tug of war Battling to keep my sanity Say no more, say no more I love you but I can't keep killing me What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Oh, can we switch up all the rules? And imagine a utopia Darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations They can weigh me down My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my name I am trying to live inside the upside down For a minute and pretend Honey, I'm a perfect ten, whoa, whoa Honey, I'm a perfect ten, whoa, whoa And if I say it enough
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Meta, where we are going to see Nazareth College go up against Adelaide High School today in this riveting matchup. Of course, my name is Adam Toasted Broom, and I am joined today by Dylan Adge Wallace. Yes, and hello there, Toasted. Of course, myself and Toasted are here from the Oceanic Esports Casting Association. Very happy to be here casting for Meta HSC as we are currently waiting for the game to get underway. Players are now joining up the lobby and sorting themselves out. Are you looking forward to this game, Toasted? As always, it is going to be a pleasure to cast. I see some familiar faces from all over the place. See some of them play in some of our tournaments, actually. Uh, so I think it's going to be exciting to say the least, especially over the last, you know, sort of two months when these teams have been getting used to each other, playing in the format of, uh, sort of these schools versus schools, a bit of banter. It's been really cool to see some of these teams grow and coming into what I believe is week eight, uh, it's going to be exciting to see how these two do match up against each other with the experience behind them. Yes, of course. And in these uh, sort of local competitions, it's always good to have it be running for a long enough time that uh, the teams can build that that's a form of familiar, uh, familiarity between each other so that they can sort of understand what that team is good at and try and counteract each other more actively. And it makes for very interesting gameplay to watch. No, you definitely are correct there. I mean, also, I'm interested to see how these teams have adapted to the meta because... Uh, it's really been a little interesting and up in the air as of late. You know, I mean, I think a lot of the junglers are sort of quite comfortable now with the jungle change of that scuttle. The pathings come, come a bit different. And as with that, we also see sort of a shift in the champion pool that we're seeing. Not as much Kindred, not as much of things like the Rek'Sai or the Jarvan due to nerfs and other things like that scuttle change. And more so, we're seeing things like the Sejuani gain even more priority than she had uh, and other tanks of the like or power farming junglers as well are in a pretty good spot in my opinion because you can get five camps before a scuttle spawns at spawns edge yeah no and it really does seem like those uh really meta tank junglers are starting to be a part of the uh more or less staple for the jungle scene being that a mumu the sejuani even sometimes the tank rexai can work out very nicely yeah, something like, I think I would like to see a Zack as well. Zack works really well in the current meta, and I, I think he's just waiting to be rediscovered. Uh, as we see the first band being cleared, I want to touch on the other lanes, like the top lane specifically, and how the jungle changes has uh, impacted those other roles. Because with the jungle pathing being a bit more passive with the timing of the scuttle, it opens up different uh, possibilities for some of the top laners and other people who could be quite vulnerable otherwise. And uh, even in the mid lane where we had this meta where you were forced to rotate for the scuttle, but now you're going to be sort of level three before you have to even consider doing that. Meaning you have a lot more options to pick. Of course, and with uh, junglers being more or less shoehorned into that tanky role with the Cinderhawk buffs, and the just general tank overhaul, top laners have become a bit more utility based in a sense. People are picking things that aren't necessarily tanks inherently, but offer very uh, niche uh, itemization and utilities for their team. That's it. I mean, as you say, something which provides a lot of utility, the Shen taken off the board, same with the Orn, which, you know, it makes a lot of sense. The final one being the Cassiopeia, as we were saying, those early aggressive uh, matchups, you can sort of sit in lane and just try and outdo your opponent in the early game and make them irrelevant rather than having to worry about, you know, oh, I'm not even level two or I've just hit level two and I have to rotate. It means that you can you know, have a bit more time to abuse if possible. So I think that's a good takeaway as Nunu the first lock in. What do you think of that, Edge? I think um, personally, the Nunu quite strong at the moment. Once again, we were talking about these junglers who can just farm multiple camps uh, and just have a power clear. Nunu does very well with that, has really good uh, pressure with those major objectives and uh the morgana as well in the support role most likely for being uh really strong with how we're seeing this meta change a lot of the tanks a lot of the other frontline has become quite uh 
quite prevalent. So that also makes Morgana better with how you want to play. Yeah, and of course the Hecarim going to be locked in in addition. A very nice pickup. And with that Morgana, with the Black Shield able to land on top of Hecarim, definitely going to be able to give him those secure engages that he's wanting to take. And we're going to also have Vayne locked in on the side of Adelaide High. I actually find the Vayne pick really, really interesting here because if you didn't uh, know, Rageblade was nerfed. Uh, it's not the most like, oh my goodness, this is the end of the world. But for someone like Vayne who has a three proc thing, the thing that made Gwinsu so nice was once you had it and you had your Gwinsu stacked, every second auto would proc your silver bolts. But now it's every third auto uh, procs the Gwinsu's passive. So it's not going to really change much. Uh, in those early trades, when you're just hitting that two-item power spike of that blade, Rage Blade, you're going to lose two or three Silver Bolt procs, which really kind of hurts that early damage that you kind of like to see out of a vein. Yeah, it really does insinuate uh, opting for a more of a uh, crit damage build. We are going to have Nautilus picked up as well for the blue side and followed up by the Ezreal on the red side, a nice safe AD carry pick for them. Yeah, no, the uh, I'm really liking this out of both teams. You've got on one hand Nazareth going all out. They want the Nautilus with the vein. They just want to kill stuff. And then on the other side, Ezreal and Morgana is a really damn safe lane. And they just want to get Ezreal to get as many slice sacks of gold in this lane phase as possible. Because that's generally what Ezreal wants to do in general. And we're going to have Zoe band away. Zoe, always one of those champions that people tend to keep an eye out for. Able to just absolutely demolish champions uh, towards the later stages of the game with the Sleepy Bubble Trouble Paddle Star combo. Renekton and Vladimir going to follow in the bands. And we're going to have the final band coming through on the blue side here. Curious to see what it is. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. That Sleepy Trouble Bubble with a Paddle Star, like... It I hate Zoe for a reason, also being able to steal those spells has gained a lot of priority back, been very tenacious in the middle lane in Season 9, really had high priority throughout the season, as Malzahar being the last ban, probably a little bit more of a target one towards Zushi. Yeah, Malzahar, definitely one of those champions that doesn't necessarily have to scale incredibly well into the game, as the utility... Uh, based from the ultimate suppression, able to just lock down one of those hard carries on the enemy team can really be the winning factor in team fights most of the time. I do definitely agree. I like how Adelaide High School play this one. They have the Jace available to them, and now they also get the counter pick for the middle lane, which is quite nice. You could even say that that Jace can be flexed towards the middle lane. Uh, you could also even say that the Morgana can be flexed and you could find a different support, but I really like this morgana Ezreal combo. So I'd rather they don't do that. Yeah, and we're constantly getting the... Uh, we're currently getting the three teleport hover. Uh, Ezreal and uh, other ADCs have been opting to take teleport more frequently to be able to get back to lane quicker and continue that hard farm and freeze the lane. Let's see if the support is also going to opt for teleport. That could spell for a good amount of uh, teamwork plays around the map. For... Right here. Yeah. Oh, nah, he goes for the Ari last pick. Honestly, I would have liked to see uh, Zuchi pick up the Jace and then have something else, like, for example, the Cannon picked in the top side of the Rift to just absolutely negate the Malphite pick, uh, just saying no towards that Jace poke damage and sort of punishing them for that, I think would have been really good to see and uh, really seal the deal for Adelaide in that. Uh, if that were to happen, I'd say Adelaide wins the draft. Both teams looking very good at the moment, though. And I'm interested to see how people are going to execute this early game. Because you have a Nunu and you have a Hecarim. And Adj, I'm sure you already know how volatile a Hecarim can be. And how much pressure a Nunu can provide. Yeah, no, Hecarim can definitely be... Hecarim is one of those make-or-break champions. They either do incredibly well in the early game, and they're just able to absolutely trample their opposition or they become, they're lopsided and they become completely irrelevant towards that late game, and the enemy jungler just would in infinitely reign superiority over them, which Nunu could definitely do with the lockdown crowd control they offer. No, I definitely agree. Like, I mean, the other thing which I think is going to be interesting to see is how Dermeister plays this 
considering it is a Hecarim, who's most likely going to take that Conqueror rune. Uh, so he actually, they both have great clears, but I think that the Nunu can be more efficient than Hecarim can, has a healthier clear and more pressure when it comes to those scuttles. He can take it very, very quickly with just you know, a little bit of CC, like throwing a snowball at it and then just chomping down on that little rift bug. Yeah, I'm eager to look into this bot lane matchup, Ezreal and Morgana into Vayne and Nautilus. Although the Vayne and Nautilus definitely will end up, I believe, outscaling the Ezreal and Morgana, Nautilus is going to be very vulnerable in the early stages, especially to the Morgana bindings and the Ezreal WQ combo, uh, yeah. combos that can just absolutely destroy him. Because prior to contrary belief, Nautilus is not very tanky in the early game. <laughs> no, you're definitely not wrong there. And it's it's very valuable like interesting that you say that yeah vein and nautilus definitely if i can choose between those two over an ezreal morgana i might i mean i might actually go for the vein morgana uh but still they definitely outscale on the side of nazareth college just in general you also have got a victor you've got a malphite for frontline with a nunu back up like are you kidding me they're just going to front to back team fight and kill everything in their path. Whereas Adelaide High School, really, if you have a look at that, a Morgana, Ezreal, and a Jace for really long range poke, and also an Ari to just sort of assassinate anyone out of place. Uh, that's kind of scary to me if you're thinking, all right, 20 minutes, they've got two, two and a half, maybe three items if any of them get ahead. That is really going to hurt. And I think that's how Adelaide need to play this. They say, all right, we wait till we hit that power spike of that two, three items. And then we just force everything, just out, rotate them, poke them to hell and back, and then just take everything for free off the back end of that. But Nazareth College just need to sort of, and I don't like using this term, but turtle and survive until they get to that point where, okay, my vein does have a blade, rage blade or blade, Phantom, whatever build we are going to see today, I'm interested personally. I don't know about you, ADJ, but who do you personally think is going to win out of these two teams based on the draft? Based out of the draft, I have to say it could definitely go either way, but I'm very tempted to see what is going to happen between the top lane matchup. Obviously, Lucy on the Malphite is going to have to play very passively on his own against the Jace. But if Dermeister is able to set up some form of gank, Malphite could very easily start to spiral out of control, just getting all that armor that they need to make Jace irrelevant and be able to just tower dive, tower dive, tower dive with the unstoppable force, making the incomplete defense of Adelaide High irrelevant. No, that's definitely correct. The one big problem with Adelaide is there's not exactly a multitude of frontline. Yes, I understand you have got the Morgana, with that sort of the little cheeky trick where you just use your ultimate and then hit the Zonyas and it's sort of in its own way like a front line because you can't go in that area. But the only other thing they've got is a Hecarim really and I wouldn't consider Hecarim a tank. He's more of a bruiser with his build path of something like the Trinity Force into Sterix Gage. But if this Malphite does get ahead, it's going to be very, very hard for someone like an Ezreal and a Jace who are more poke damage than consistent DPS like the Vayne to shred through that mountain of a man. I think yeah. it's all... Sorry, go oh, ahead. No, 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 by all means. Uh, yeah, no, it is definitely going to be reflective on what happens in, I believe, the top and mid matchup. Jungle is also going to play a very good part in that by helping decide how those lanes will end up rolling out. Definitely. I think that it's all lies on the top side. All right, we are paused at 10 seconds, so go ahead, you know. I, I definitely think that this game is going to be decided in the top side of the Rift Edge. Uh, yeah, it could to definitely go back? decided in the top side of the Rift. But as you mentioned before, there is that Victor in the mid lane, and he could very well start to pop off if he gets early support from Dermeister. It it pretty much soulfully resi uh, resides within the junglers on each team and whether they want to try and get their solo lanes ahead. I do believe it's going to be a bit of a stalemate early on in the bot lane if, that is, of course, if uh, Lamau is going to be able to stay safe in that bot side on the Nautilus. You're definitely correct. I mean... 
if it's played correctly out of both these teams, the Nautilus should never feasibly land a hook. Uh, because you have got the Ezreal who, even if he does land a hook and there isn't a black shield on him, he can jump away, and Morgana should be in range of that threat. Yeah, we did have a little bit of an early expedition coming out from Adelaide, going into the red side jungle of Nazareth, putting down some good ward coverage at their red and raptor brush. They are going to be seeing the Nunu starting up on the red now as they're going to be leashing the blue for awesome.com himself. Jace putting down his own ward in the pixel brush. Very nice of him to watch for the potential early invade from the Nunu to try and steal the Hecarim's red buff. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, we're going to see sort of standard stuff out of both these junglers. What I think was a little bit interesting, actually, was the fact that awesome.com didn't start the chickens. Now, this is an interesting sort of way to play but when you're a hacker and have a lot of uh aoe you can sort of say well all right i don't need a leash i can have more pressure for an early gank clear my top side back get myself sort of you you have about 400 gold to get stuff and then you can actually head back and get yourself maybe a long sword even and a we will be having a pause but also you know some vision and then you head to the bottom side clear that side, get the Scudful, and you have some extra damage for those early ganks to help you get that early snowball going. Because as you were saying, once he gets those items... Ooh, Speaking hook. of which, a hook coming in. Very nice. That's going to be Ignite popped onto Bingsu, and that is going to be the Ignite ticking down. First blood going over to Lamau. A very nice uh, counteraction there on the level 2, getting Morgana before the uh, Dark Shield came up. Yeah, no, a very, very good abuse of that mistake. A uh, little bit of a whoopsie out of being so, you know, just n not standing behind those minions, getting caught out. As we were saying, you need to be behind the minions at safety where Nautilus isn't a threat. As we see, Ezreal does have a way out of it, but the Morgana doesn't, and I'm pretty sure she didn't get a Black Shield level 2. Yeah, and Lamau actually landing some very nice hooks at the max range. Uh, Keo is out of mana and going to be forced to rely on auto attacks unless he's willing to risk burning that cookie he's got in his back pocket. Meanwhile, Wave is crashing into topside. A little bit of a scuffle happening here over by the scuttle. Actually, Hecarim's going to be able to pick that up for himself, and he's got Conqueror proc. He can continue the chase, but he's going to back off as he can see that he has no vision. He can't really see where... Uh, the other laners are more or less aside from the Malphite, so he doesn't want to risk going in too deep. Well, I mean, at, at the same time, he doesn't really need to. I mean, he he secures the scuttle due to a little bit of an oopsie out of Dermeister, the smite living at 77 HP. But it means that he can double scuttle him here, and that, that kind of sucks if you are a jungler and you get double scuttled in this meta when it actually gives more XP than it used to and more gold. So. It's quite detrimental, and now you have a really great first back if you are awesome.com. Yeah, we and do have a snowball coming into yeah. the mid here. It is definitely going to be able to connect eventually. A double knockup, actually, on top of awesome.com and Zuichi. But unfortunately, the damage coming out from Hecarim is a bit too much, and Dermaiser cannot keep up the fight. Yeah, no, that Hecarim having that Conqueror just still hurts way too much to deal with if you are a Nunu early. Much like the Malphite, not exactly the tankiest uh, boy on the rift until you get those items. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to have the dragon coming up now at about five minutes or so. Mountain Drake looks like it's going to be it as we have Zuichi backing off in the mid lane. Going to pick himself up an item. Going to be another Doran's Ring and an Amplifying Tome. Definitely not the uh, kind of start you want early on the Ari. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. About this Mountain Drake, I think that we're going to see a lot of priority here from both these teams, actually, considering Dermeister thinks that looks pretty juicy considering he is on that Nunu. But if you are on the side of Adelaide, I'm sure you sniff that one out and notice he's probably looking to chomp that one for his own team. So... I expect to see a lot of wards around there. It is a mountain, very good priority. Of course, it's no Infernal Drake, but I know I would definitely want that one in my back pocket if I was on either team. 
Absolutely, and of course we have, to, as to be expected, with uh, no influence from the jungle in the top side, it's uh, not looking too great for Lucy. He's able to keep up reasonably in CS in a losing matchup. That's absolutely fine for the Malphite. He's not going to be used for his overall damage. He's more or less used for that ultimate, which he will be able to activate with the Aftershock, which will indeed be very nice when that becomes an effective part of uh, Nazareth's teamfight. Meanwhile, nice charm coming out onto Verez, and Awesome.com is going to be able to move in and help secure the kill for Zuichi. That's going to be a kill going over to Adelaide. Very nicely done. Ignite almost took down Awesome.com, but he is able to get away just on barely anything. Yeah, no, and that's really well done out of Awesome.com, keeping the ball rolling, making sure that he gets his team ahead on this Hecarim pick. I mean, also has the damage himself stacking up with two long swords in his back pocket. And I'm curious to see if either of these junglers are going to give priority towards the top side. I think if you are Dermeister, you were saying before, the Malphite doesn't do much damage. And while that's true, he's not, he's, he's a utility bot and a, a, just this massive sponge. He still does a lot of base damage early on before you get resistances and just raw HP. Uh, that I think that if Dermeister comes up to say hello to Shanty, I think they can deal with him quite handily, to be honest. So I, I honestly want to see some priority up there to stop this Jace from just getting ahead because he's just essentially getting to do whatever he wants at this point in time, Edge. Yeah, that is definitely true, but at the same time, by moving Dermeister up into that top side, you do risk the potential double kill for Shantanom, which would absolutely be disastrous for the side of Nazareth. And so it's almost better to just avoid putting pressure top side, just so they scale individually, and Jace isn't too big of a threat. Yeah, no, you're definitely right there. We see a little bit. I love seeing this. We're seeing both these junglers. Uh, in the meantime, while everything's going on, like, instead of going for those lanes, I mean, if you are awesome, Speaking he can just do going he for lanes, awesome.com coming in. Unstoppable charge coming in. And that is going to be a, another kill being handed over to Zuichi in that mid lane. Awesome.com really applying the pressure there. Yeah, no, and... This is great to see. He just notices, all right, top lane's just going to do what they want. Bot lane's sort of a stalemate. It makes a lot of sense to just spend a lot of time in the enemy's jungle and try and deny a lot from Demeister. But at the same time, get that assassin in Ari ahead because there's a reason we have so many Ari mains on the rift. And that's because she is lethal while also looking incredibly good at the same time, Edge. So he's done very well, 2-0 on Zuichi at the moment already, and having a lost chapter with an amp tone into Victor's hex core upgrades is pretty unfortunate if you are on the Victor end of that matchup right now. Yeah, absolutely, and as bot lane is becoming more prevalent, meanwhile, a gank happening in topside, Lucy forced to flash away, is gonna get away just in time. As I was saying, bot side, playing rather passively after that first blood came over to Nazareth. Uh, IDC is farming up relatively evenly, so it's really going to be a more or less whose team fight is better when those ADCs finally move out of the bot side. Yeah, no, you're definitely correct there. And look, I think both teams are playing this very, very well. On the one side, ADG know that they need to be as aggressive as possible early before Nazareth can ramp up. But Nazareth know they need to be as uh, passive as possible. And my only concern for Nazareth is the fact that Verza has been stepping forward a little bit too much without the vision to back it up. So it's just handed over two free kills essentially to the enemy mid laner and if that continues to happen things could go very south very quick uh and i hope that they keep that under the wraps for now yeah, whereas awesome.com has been more or less uh trying to shovel food into zuichi's mouth food being versa meanwhile a very nice engage coming out from santium damage is not going to be enough to finish off lucy as I was saying, as Awesome.com has been more or less helping out his mid lane, Dex uh, Dermeister has been focusing on counter jungling Awesome.com. So we'll see if that is going to pay off. Meanwhile, a fight is breaking out. Awesome.com is in the middle of everything. That is going to be an absolute zero coming through and a nice knockup 
But now, he's going to secure another kill. And that's going to be the Dark Binding coming out from Bingsu. Dermice is all alone now. Santium made his way down. And that is going to be a clean sweep in that fight for Adelaide. And look like they're going to push mid to try and get those platings other than pushing for the Mountain Drake. I think both teams played that very well. Uh... Like, you've got the Collapse coming out of uh, Versa to sort of start things off, and uh, also maybe Wiss the ultimate, but his team also collapses, and it's great to see these teams actually working well together and noticing that, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. And I think that there's so much priority, as we're saying, around this Dragon, because neither team wants to give it up. A lot of early uh, invades to just see where the enemy jungler is, See if they can try and sneak that objective because uh, that is a one great one to pick up for tower destruction. And if you can stack those, you can grab yourself a pretty nice early Baron for yourself. Yeah, and it's just really unfortunate for Nazareth that the kills are more or less piling on to Lamau oh, of anyone. Verza does find awesome.com in the jungle, but it might not be the best fight to pick as Zuichi is on the way. Charm will not connect, so he'll be able to get out nice and safe. He has his support there in the mid lane. Meanwhile, Dermeister trying to solo that dragon. I don't believe that Adelaide has vision on it. No, I think that one seems like it's going to be pretty free for Dermeister to pick up at this point. And uh, there we go. It is felled. And the next one is going to be that much coveted Infernal Drake. So I expect to see some explosive action around there. Oh, condemn. Going in on his own. Black Shield does land and the hook will be denied. But it doesn't matter because basic Beast Boy has the damage to back it up. And they are just going to try and look to press with the tower. Cheeky auto attack onto Kyo under the tower. But nothing else much going to be able to come of that. Yeah, uh, very well done. Out of basic beast, you just realize, well, I mean, once again, Bingsu oversteps a little bit without any, like, any reason to. You have no reason to be that far up. And basic beast boy just abuses that and chucks him into the wall and chucks some gold in his back pocket. Yeah, did not anticipate the Condemn connecting. Meanwhile, though, looking at the vision currently, it's going very well for the side of Adelaide, especially in the bot side, but Nazareth are able to keep their own in that top side and give Lucy the vision he needs to be able to more or less be safe in lane. Yeah, no, I mean, things have been very, very passive down there for both of these teams. Uh... In the top side and the bot side, really, all we've been seeing is, I mean, it's just been an absolute sort of bit of abuse out of Shanty on the Jace, onto the Malphite, but that is sort of to be expected. As you were saying, Malphite not tanky in the early game. Um, so, it's been very passive everywhere, and it's been nice to see that both junglers are doing a lot to try and help their team get ahead. Awesome.com has four of the five kill participation at this point in time. Yeah, and uh, Lamau has four, uh, sorry, four out of five for the side of Nazareth. Meanwhile, there was a bit of pressure being put topside bird by Dermeister. He's wanting to keep a lot of vision around Rift Herald. Probably going to look to secure it himself as they did see Awesome.com moving into that bot side. So now might be the best time for him to move for this objective. Yeah, honestly, well, I mean, Awesome.com is just sitting there and... It He's seen, Dermast has seen clearing out that pink, so they have to know that he's at least sniffing for it. The ward goes down, they know that he's looking to take the rift, but there's no smite available as it looks like Basic Beast could Beast be Boy going in, but oversteps and awesome.com is there. The on onslaught coming out. Lamau is forced back into the line. He's not going to be able to secure anything for himself, and that's going to be a double kill going over to awesome.com. Meanwhile, Nazareth are able to secure themselves the Rift Herald, but it, that might be first turret coming out in the bot side. Sheen on the Ezreal, they should be able to get this. Yeah, no, really nice play out of Adelaide High, because honestly, I'm going to say that's 100% worth. I give up the Rift Herald for a double kill onto the Hecarim and still getting the first tower anyways, any day of the week, because as we were saying, you want to try and scale as much as you can in the early game, so that Rift isn't exactly the highest of priority. Uh, I mean, it's great to get it, but when you can instead do that and have your Hecarim 
far, far ahead. I, I think that's pretty good. 2-1-4 sitting on that pony at the moment. Yeah, I said Hecarim was a bit of a make it or break it champion, and it definitely does look like he has the potential to make it. Dermeister did appear mid and force the Spirit Rush out of Zuichi, but it will be off cooldown by the time he gets back to lane, unless he decides to teleport in. But even then, I do believe it has a relatively short cooldown. We do have Kyo and Bingsu now rotating up to that top side to counteract Lushi, who has the uh, Rift Herald on him currently. So won't be able to get a good amount of use out of it on his own up there. Meanwhile, it looks like Natheris are trying to make a play for the top side. As we can see, some pings coming out. They do have vision on the bot side to try and counteract any kind of dragon play. We'll see how this turns out, though. Yeah, no, you definitely are correct. I don't know how I feel about the Rift being on the Malphite, uh, but it is what it is. There's about 3,500 gold difference in favor of Adelaide at the moment, and maybe that's the idea to try and get Lushy uh, back in the driver's seat a little bit more as he goes bot side to slowly push it, but you're not really going to do that, even if Dermeist is there, I think, because Shanti clears out the wave very, very easily at this point because... He is like almost There's right. down the head. again, and awesome.com is going to be able to secure that kill for himself. And that may very well be the mid turret. Meanwhile, Lushti with Rift Herald slow pushing in the bot side. Infernal Drake is now up at 17 minutes. And meanwhile, in top side, Basic Beast Boy and Lamau, they're just not doing anything. They're able to land a hook, but Dark Beast Shield is there. Uh, the depth charge will knock up Bingsu, and the damage will be enough for Basic Beast Boy to finish them off. But it looks like Adelaide are going to be able to secure that Infernal for themselves. Meanwhile, Kyo is going to be able to maybe get himself a solo kill. No. Basic Beast Boy is able to duck and dive out of the way. Meanwhile, Dermice <laughs> flashes over the wall and is eating the Infernal Drake. That is going to be an absolute zero coming out, but it's not going to be enough. And he's not going to be able to do enough damage to kill off Awesome.com. Meanwhile, Lucius is on his own. Rift Herald is almost a quarter off, off, uh, of the way gone. Yeah, no... Only a quarter left on that rift, but I think that was beautiful. Just what the doctor ordered out of Dermeister there, because as we we're saying, he just wants to scale and grabbing himself an infernal for his team when you also already have that first Drake of the game in the side of that mountain is pretty great. You're getting that scaling aspect going. Next dragon will be a second. Infernal. So I think once again we'll be seeing something as spicy, whether it be kills or a steal or both, come out of either of these teams in a couple of minutes. Yeah, Rift Herald on Lucy is about to go away. He needs to drop it now. It looks like he's going to try and opt to drop it in the bot side, but it's way too far back and could easily be counteracted by someone. Yeah, he's yeah. going to drop it there. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, once again, I think the reason that you don't put it on any laners like a top laner is because it's too easy to track them, and they don't really have the uh, ease to just go wherever is the most convenient and easiest to get an advantage out of. Yeah, but absolutely. Lamau is caught up by the Dark Binding, and but that's a lot of damage coming from Verza. He's able to get the lockdown. Lamau is going to be able to secure the kill for himself. Zuichi barely gets away, but Verza has trouble of his own. Kyo is able to finish him off with the Mystic Shot. Meanwhile, Dermeister is there. Teleport coming in from Lushi. He's not going in, though. A little bit of an interesting one right there. I don't understand, but all right. Um... It's great to see both of these teams and how they are playing it once again. I think... I definitely say Adelaide is falling ahead at this point, but you're also playing to the win condition on the side of Nazareth. Yeah, maybe there's a couple of things which I'd try and iron out, some of the unnecessary places to be, but, you know, Beast Boy has got the completed blade and is opting in for that Rage Blade with the pickaxe and almost the recurve bow completed. So, you know, sort of two-thirds of the way to that second item, and that's pretty great. Once Basic Beast Boy gets it, it's still a very, very strong item in the back pocket of any AD carry with on-hit potential. Yeah, and the Rift Herald did do a bit of damage to that bot side tower, but was not enough to take it out. Tower is currently 3-0 to zero in favor of Adelaide, but the gold difference is only around 6k, so it's not out of the realm of possibility for Nazareth to turn this around. A lot of damage getting down onto Lushi. 
does fall quite low there. Uh, just once again, this pressure that we're seeing now out of the teams. Look at looking down the items. Kyo, two and a half items already. A lot of poke damage out of that. So they're able to just start saying, all right, well, we have the damage. We can start abusing it because that's what their team's meant to do. Ezreal, really good at poke. Jace, really damn good at poke. Bingsu, really good at catching people out. And guess what? Also good at poke. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, we do have the Glacial Augment build coming out on Zuichi on the Ari. We do have the Hexec GLP and the Twin Shadows coming out, so they will be able to catch people out if they stray a bit too far out into the open, which could very well spell disaster for any of the individual carries that might try and uh, look to get some form of farm outside of their safe zone, whether it be Basic Beast Boy or uh, Verza. Yeah, no, Zuichi running the anti-fun Ari build. The build all slows and your opponent never moves with the Glacial Augment. But we see the... That was a bit interesting. Just a little bit of a startup out of uh, Adelaide onto the Baron. And it looks like they are going to try and bait it. But I honestly don't know that Nazareth and any the wiser. Yeah, it, there are some pinks coming out, so Nazareth might look to try and check. They do catch out Lamau, and the Dark Binding will secure a lot of damage. That is going to be the kill going over to Kyo. Meanwhile, another fight is starting out. Beast Boy gets an awesome.com on top of him. The damage, though, is a lot, and that's going to be a shutdown going over to Verza. And the Absolute Zero will lock them down. Lushi is there. Ultimate still up. Where is he going to use it? He hasn't used it all game. He's going to use it sometime. Meanwhile, Kyo is running away on barely anything, as is Shanaton. And Zuichi is going to help guide them to safety. Lushi, again, late to the fight, not able to contribute anything. Yeah, no, uh, a bit of a scrappy fight there. And honestly, really well done, I think, out of Basic Beast Boy. That condemn as Awesome Tot was channeling the ultimate pushes him away and yes uh basic beast still does get feared but is just given that second from the condemn to get to safety while it goes off and i just think that was really well done to allow his team more potential to get some damage off because all the targets are usually on a vein when team fights do roll around especially with that rage leg completed right now Edge. yeah and that's going to be a second infernal coming up uh, Nezareth definitely wants to contest for this, but I don't feel like they have the pressure or the vision. There is a double control ward in the Dragon Pit, so they can see how much health pool it's on. Dermeister is going to flash over. He might be able to secure it. He does. He steals it away, but that is going to be him going down, and I don't think Nazareth is going to be able to win the fight out now, and Adelaide might look to try and take the Baron here. Yeah, no, that was a little bit of an interesting one. Uh... Because, yeah, Dermeister, you steal away that Infernal yourself. I think that's great. I It's a hard decision because it is an Infernal. But now you're down and they have a free Baron to take. And also, Versa kind of in a really weird position considering Dermeister's kind of suiciding for the Dragon. They have no point of contesting because it's a 3v5 right now. Absolutely. But Baron is actually dealing a lot of damage. Awesome.com forced to rotate out and force Shannon to take the tank but as you did say Dermeister sacrificing himself for an infernal drake but allowing Adelaide to secure the dragon I'm not sure if it's worth it the damage buff is certainly going to be nice but I feel like again uh, at, uh Nezareth do win team fights it's just they they have never had a team fight where Lushi is an active participant and Malphite being Malphite has is a, such a key asset to team fights with that hard lockdown with the unstoppable force he did use it before but uh unfortunately it had no payoff yeah exactly and like look this is great for adelaide and it may have actually been intentional to sort of bait the infernal say all right it doesn't matter if we do lose this infernal we kill the jungler and we get a free baron and we have so much poke and damage right now that this is great for us. This is what we want. We need to close the game out as quickly as possible, lest we uh, allow Beast Boy to just roll over us. And also, Verza, once he does get a couple more items, because they do not win out in the late game. As we were saying earlier in the Champion Select, 
and they have definitely done well to, to secure themselves this Baron and start pushing objectives. Yeah, and push objectives they most certainly must try to do, because if the forces of Nazareth are able to get those item spikes and get the damage that they need, we can already uh, we already saw in the last team fight they are capable of doing damage. But if they continue to farm and get those items, they're going to just absolutely obliterate the side of Adelaide High. So they need to try and pressure those objectives and try and retain the gold lead that they currently have. We do have Shannaton in the bot side. Dermeister is there, but he's not going to look to contest. The tower does go down. Meanwhile, they're just pressuring the mid lane, but not able to really get anything, because they're just clearing the minion wave way too fast with that victor. And that is going to be an unstoppable force coming out onto off of Zuchi, and Dermeister is in the back line. Meanwhile, Kyo is going down, and Awesome.com just does not have the tankiness to survive the vain procs, and that is going to be a very nice fight coming out for Nazareth, and that is going to be the hook forward that locks down Zuichi, and oh my goodness, Dermeister is not done, he's going to go in and finish off Shannaton, that's going to be a clean ace for the side of Nazareth, and they're going to look to push down hard in the mid lane, securing their very first turret of the game. Five for nothing in favor of Nazareth College, taking out the Baron in very, very stylish, uh, composure right there as they can just barrel down just punishing the fact that Bingsu and Kyo are out of place and they just collapse on it and Basic Beast does the rest of the work that's now a base open from oh nice night by Kyo base opened for the side of Nazareth first ones to do so and they just got their first turret mind you yep absolutely as I said we knew that the side of Nazareth could win the team fights they have the damage they have the crowd control potential and they were finally able to get a team fight where everyone was in everyone was committed everyone was in a good position and it paid off wonderfully they get their first turret not only that but they got two more in addition one of them being an inhibitor turret if they win this next fight that could very well be the game if they can push it hard enough you're definitely correct there. At the very least, it should score some major objectives. The next objective coming up will be that Mountain Drake. And much like all the other Drakes, this game, very high priority, especially 28 minutes in to this, this game between, honestly, two very well-coordinated uh, teams, in my opinion. They've both played it very well. Yeah, there are some mistakes. What team doesn't have those issues? Uh, and now I'm really interested to see how Adelaide are going to deal with Nazareth College. Because yes, the game, they may be ahead in gold at this point in time, but I think definitely in terms of the team fight, I take Nazareth's lineup every single day of the week. Oh, absolutely. And yes, you cannot dis, uh, discourage the pressure provided from Awesome.com in that early game. Definitely putting his team in the good position that is currently in. They are looking to put pressure on this Mountain Drake. Dermice is there. He does have Flash available. They don't. They do have Vision now as the double control ward setup is there. He's going in constantly rooted down and he's not able to get into the pit to secure it. And that's a lot of damage. He's forced to flash out and that's going to be a lot of pressure putting on to Lamau. He's going to go down eventually. Meanwhile, Awesome.com is on top of Verza. He's not going to be able to finish him off. Actually, he almost runs back into the Chaos Storm, killing himself. Unfortunately, not... Verza, and that was a lot of pressure put from Shannonton in that top side on top of Lucy, but Lucy being the rock monster, able to resist. Yeah, no, a little bit surprised there, to be honest, at how, um, how the team's going. They all poise around the dragon, even though they're not necessarily looking to team fight, and that to me just puzzles. You say, alright, yeah, by all means, send Dermeister there to see if he can secure the dragon. That's just finding on to Dermeister. He's ta not taking too much damage. The True Shot Barrage will take him reasonably low, but that's a force flash out of Zuichi. Yeah, no. Uh, this Nunu is a very tanky boy at the moment. Three items pretty much across the board for everyone right now, which just means everything heats up. I'm just a little bit confused at that last fight as Lushi, with teleport available, Shannaton did, I believe he did have teleport available in that instance, he did just recently use it, but nevertheless, as we said, uh, um, Nazareth win teamfights over Adelaide, hi, absolutely.
And Lucy is going to fire himself a Shannon. He's going to ward him off to the Baron. And they're just looking to try and rush this out. Contorward is down. So they do have knowledge of the attempt. But that Vayne is doing a lot of damage with the Silver Silver Shards. And that is going to be the Baron secured by Dermeister. I believe that was the uh, Chomp coming through. And they may very well be starting to look to push, secure more towers and more gold. Yeah, no, look, honestly, the smite, the consume smite coming out of Demise pretty much means that with a vein in your back pocket, that is a lot of consistent DPS. I don't see why you don't just force that and take the one for free, essentially, because there ain't no way that awesome.com should, in theory, be able to steal that one away from a Nunu. Uh, and it's just very well done out of the side of Nazareth College to realize, all right, we have the damage, the pressure. Uh, we can just force this one and start closing out some of those objectives and closing that gold lead a little more. Basic Beast Boy now also has got the Phantom Dancer with the Quicksilver Sash in his back pocket. So it's going to be a very, very slippery and a little bit tanky uh, vein coming out of the side of Nazareth College. Yeah, and of course, as we hit a 32-minute mark for the game, we're going to have teams more or less moving in the middle of the map, trying to pressure out each other and look for that engage that they desperately want. Black Shield is going to go down eventually. It's not up right now, and that's going to be a lot of good engages coming out from the side of Nazareth, and they are just not able to hold back. They are just obliterating the side of Adelaide High, and basic... Beast Boy is going absolute beast mode on top of Zuichi, and that is going to be the game with Baron. They are going to take down the Nexus and win this game. Wow. Yeah, we, we didn't really sing the praises of Verza too much, but he picks up a quadra in that final in exchange. Basic Beast Boy, scumbag Vayne, steals that one away, and we will see a very, very clean end out of Nazareth College. Team A on this uh, occasion. What an absolutely interesting game coming out from there. So much going on from both sides. The pressure from awesome.com in that early game, but then the absolute presence in the objective control from Dermeister was absolute for both teams. Yeah, definitely correct there. I mean, I think that was just, that was honestly I loved that game for so many reasons with how both teams were playing to their win condition early on. Awesome.com goes ham on the hackerim and makes Zuichi quite the a big fox, but we didn't really see uh, Zuichi do too much with the lead that he was gifted, in my opinion, uh, which is kind of sad because with how this team comp uh, is set up and designed on the side of Adelaide, you need to step on the gas and be as proactive as possible. Didn't see Zuichi go down bot side once. Didn't really see any of that roaming or just looking to just find any chance to delete Basic Beast Boy or Versa from the rift. Absolutely. And I think the name of this game was more or less pressure. The pressure put out from both of these teams. Because if you look at the uh, kill participation, it wasn't exactly a very high kill game compared to the other games that have been going on in the high school uh, league. It's just... Yeah, they were able to uh, secure the objective control and apply so much pressure, but there's also such very little kill participation going on. Yeah, you're definitely correct. But with that, game one will be uh, at a close. Nazareth taking that one for themselves in a very convincing fashion towards the end of the game. But uh, I have been Adam Toaster Broom, joined by Dylan Adge Wallace. Yes, and that is going to be it from us for now. There's going to be another game happening later today. Hopefully you tune in and watch that. It has been us from here at Meta, uh, casters from the Oceanic Esports Casting Association. Thank you all for watching. Catch you later.